Today, I am bringing you a build capable of sneaking right into the enemy front lines while swiftly assassinating any target, even in Grandmasters. It's going to allow you to cause explosions everywhere, gain void overshields, and carry your team in any content. However, Care Falcons is mostly about weapons, and that is why in the second part of this video, I will be ranking and reviewing the best and most popular weapons that you can pair up with this build. But for now, let's start with the basics. Care Falcons provides your void weapons with volatile rounds after you emerge from being invisible. This is the basic mechanic that you will be using 99% of the time, and the beauty about this is that we can combine it with our aspect Stylish Executioner, which makes us invisible whenever we defeat a debuff target. The volatile rounds that we get from Gear Falcons count as a debuff, which then creates this infinite invisibility loop as long as there's enemies to kill. Do keep in mind that you can only go invisible once every 2 seconds, because you get a debuff called Too Stylish after each use of this aspect. Also, remember to shoot your weapon or melee thin air before your invisibility runs out, because if you don't, then you won't get the volatile rounds buff. Lastly, Gear Falcons also gives your weapons a damage boost, as well as provides you and your teammates with a reserve overshield and improved class ability regeneration if you perform a finisher while being invisible. This is extremely situational, but it's good to know, because it basically provides you with your entire dodge back. Alright, now that you know the core of this build, let's get into the general aspects, fragments and mods that we are going to be using, and then after that I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to play this build efficiently. When the artifact, you want to pick Authorized Mod Void, Shattered Orbs, Bricks from Beyond, and Volatile Flow. The reason why we are not using Void Weapon Channeling is because it's completely bugged and it's causing people to disconnect from their game. Now, ability-wise, we are using Gamble's Dodge just to get our melee back whenever we dodge, then we are using Vortex Grenades, and if you're using Collective Obligation, you might want to use Suppression Grenades, that way you can have all three types of debuffs on your weapon. Aspect-wise, we are using Stylus Executioner, which is the bread and butter of this build, and it's going to make you invisible whenever you defeat a weakened, suppressed or volatile target. Next up, we have Vanishing Step, and this simply makes you invisible whenever you dodge. For our fragments, we are starting off with Echo of Starvation, which is going to give you that Devour buff whenever you pick up an Orb of Power or Void Breach. Echo of Persistence is going to increase the duration of the Devour, Overshield and Invisibility. We use all three, so this is very good. Next up, we have Echo of Obscurity, which is going to make you invisible whenever you finish an enemy. And finally, the last fragment is quite flexible, but you mainly have two choices, either Echo of Cessation, if you want to be able to create those void breaches and make everyone volatile after you finish an enemy, or Echo of Undermining if you want your grenade to also weaken targets. That way you have another extra way of going invisible in case you need to. Mod-wise, we are starting on our helmet and we are using Void Siphon, which is going to create an orb of power whenever we get a double kill with a void weapon. We are combining that with Heavy Ammo Finder and Heavy Ammo Scout, so we can generate more heavy ammo for ourselves and for our teammates. On our gauntlets, we are using Font of Focus and Font of Vigor. This is going to give us 3 tiers of discipline and 3 tiers of strength whenever we have an armor charge. Then we are also using Buster Detonation, just so we can get our class ability a bit faster. On our chest plate, we are using Triple Resistance mods to make sure that we don't die when playing a little bit more aggressive. On our leg armor, we are using Triple Void Weapon Surge to maximize the damage output that we deal with our Void Weapons. Now, if you don't see yourself or your teammates making a lot of orbs, then you can always switch one of the Weapon Surges for Stack on Stacks. Finally, on our cloak, we are using Double Time Dilation. This way, our armor charges are going to take longer to decay. We are combining this with another blue mod being Font of Restoration for those extra 3 tiers of recovery. If you're using a grenade launcher or a choice rifle and you need special ammo, then feel free to swap out one of the time dilations for a special finisher. Volatile rounds counter barrier champions, meaning that with Gear Falcons you pretty much never have to worry about them unless you're using a champion artifact mod, which takes priority. Remember that you can start your rotation with your smoke bomb or even grenade if you're using Echo of Undermining. Both will weaken the target, allowing you to go invisible when you defeat them. 
In harder content, I suggest saving your dodge for emergency situations since it's the only reliable way for you to go invisible. But also, at the same time, don't be afraid to use it because you can get your entire dodge back if you finish an enemy while being invisible. Talking about finishers, they are your best friend if you're stuck in a bad spot and have no way of becoming invisible. This is where those finishes come in very handy because they make you invisible and allow you to not only reposition, but also to proc your falcons. Finally, Devour is going to be active on you very often, meaning that you will be very hard to kill, since not only you're going invisible on kill, but also healing back to full. Now that you guys have the knowledge of a deadly assassin, it's time to choose our weapons, as these will define how you play the build. Starting off, we have Lemonarch and Under Your Skin. These two can easily be used in the hardest content, such as Grandmasters, as they excel with their long range, meaning you won't be putting yourself in dangerous situations. Lemonarch specifically is an absolute monster, and it's one of my favorite picks when facing Overload Champions. Pulse Rifles like Collective Obligation, Veles X and Graviton Lance are also excellent picks for hard content, since they offer a decent range while bringing very interesting perks like Repulse or Brace. Collective Obligation specifically is another excellent pick if you are using Suppressing Grenades, that way the weapon can steal all three types of debuff. If you are a fan of scout rifles, which to be honest, if I'm going to use a scout as my main weapon, then I'd rather slap on a bow. Your two best options in here are Doom of Chalkis and Pointed Inquiry. Both come with excellent perks and can be used to safely pick on your enemies from a distance. Wave Splitter and Hollow Denial are our trace rifle options and they are extremely fun to play with. Wave Splitter offering a weaken after you pick up an orb of power, while Hollow Denial being craftable and coming with some very good perks like Repulsor Brace and Lead from Gold for that ammo economy. If you plan on using these, then it's worth taking the mod Special Finisher on your class item so you can always have special ammo available. For our close range weapons, we have the Funnel Web, Unforgiven and the Title. Funnel Web being the best out of the three if you want more damage and if you don't like to reload. While Unforgiven and the Title come with Repulsor Brace, meaning you can have those infinite overshields if that's what you're looking for. We can't forget about grenade launchers since we also have a couple of very good ones such as Fighting Lion, Dead Messenger, Harsh Language and Wilder Flight. I took Fighting Lion into a GM and it was pretty solid, but it wasn't the most enjoyable experience of my life, so I wouldn't recommend taking it into very hard content. Dead Messenger is an absolute outclear beast, especially when paired up with volatile rounds. Harsh Language and Wilder Flight are also very strong if you, once again, want that Repulsor Brace perk for the infinite overshields. Finally, for our heavy weapons, the best one by far is Retrofit Escapade since you can use it as your primary weapon and play extremely aggressive. It melts champions, even in Grandmaster, and it has excellent ammo economy. Commemoration is also a craftable one and it rolls with very interesting perks like Reconstruction and Killing Tally. Lastly, Taipan and Royal Entry are the go-to if you prefer using Linears or Rocket Launchers. And that is all that I have for you guys today, if you have any questions, then you can ask me directly in my Discord server. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and have a wonderful rest of your day.